Lesson 3-3, Properties of Logarithms. There are three properties of logarithms that we can use to combine or divide logarithms apart. We have the product property. Remember, logarithms are exponents. Logarithms are exponents. So they have the same properties as exponents. When you multiply with the same base, you add the exponents. So product property, if you're multiplying inside the logarithm, you can rewrite it as adding two separate logarithms. When you divide with the same base, you subtract logarithms, the exponents. So if you're dividing inside a logarithm, it's subtracting the two separate logarithms. And if you have exponent parenthesis exponent, you end up multiplying the exponents. Or this one you can think of if you have exponent inside a logarithm, it can come out to the front of the logarithm. All right, so these examples, we're going to take each expression and write it in terms of ln2 and ln5. Remember, ln is log with the base of e, so it's a natural base logarithm. So what is ln of 10? Well, 10 is 2 times 5. I'm looking at twos and fives here. Property, the product property says if I multiply inside the logarithm, I can rewrite it as adding the two separate logarithms. And if you wanted to, you could double check that in your calculator and see they are in fact the same. Let's try another. Well, this looks like it's dividing. If we're dividing in a logarithm, we can write it as subtracting. Except for we have a 32, and I want it in twos and fives. Well, conveniently, 32 is 2 to the fifth. So now I have an exponent inside my logarithm. The exponent can go in front of that logarithm. So I'll have natural log 5 minus 5 times the natural log of 2. And now we're all in natural logs of 5 and natural logs of 2. We can also use the properties of logarithms to expand logarithms. So we want to make it stretched out. So I notice there's a multiply there and a multiply there. Now if we multiply in a logarithm, we can rewrite it as adding. So log of 3 plus log of 2 plus log of y. Now there's no base. Do you remember what the base is? That's right, it's base 10. All right, okay, we're not quite done because we have this exponent. The exponent can go in front of its logarithm. So I'll have log base 3 plus 2 times log base x plus log base y. Let's try another. Well, one of the first things to notice is the square root. And let's remember that the square root is the same as the exponent of 1 half. So we can rewrite it that way, so it's exponents. And then we're dividing. So when we divide logarithms, it's written as subtraction. Top one minus the bottom one. And then we have this exponent in a logarithm which can come in front. So it's 1 half the natural log of 4x plus 1 
minus natural log of 8. I cannot split up this 4x plus 1 because it has the plus. If you go back and look at the properties, there's no property for adding inside of a logarithm, just multiplying and dividing. So that is the answer. We can do the opposite of expand and condense, which means we're going to take the long thing and squish it down. So the things in front, we're going the opposite direction, could become exponents. So log of x to the one-third plus log of x minus 3 to the fifth. And we're adding. So adding means we write it as multiplication. Now we're just going to multiply the things in the log. So it would be x to the third times x minus 3 to the fifth. So it's one logarithm. We multiplied the things together that were inside of it. Let's try another. Again, the numbers in front can go inside the logarithm as exponents. This will be natural log of x minus 4 to the fourth minus natural log of x squared. And now we're subtracting. So subtracting is means it's dividing the single logarithm. So we'll have x to the 4 over x squared inside the single logarithm. Let's try one more. All right, let's work from inside out. So the first thing is the plus here. So since it's plus, I can rewrite it as multiplying the logarithms together. Then the one-fifth can go and become an exponent. But it's going to be an exponent over everything inside the logarithm, the x and the x minus 2. Oops. Well, let's see. A uh, fractional exponent like that would be a radical. So this would be the fifth root of x, x minus 2. Another useful property of logarithms is the change of base formula, which allows us to change the base, as the name implies. So if I have log base b of c, I can rewrite it as log of some other base of c divided by log of that other base of b. Notice the base is on the bottom, the other number is on top. So let's evaluate. That allows you to evaluate this in your calculator. So log base 3 is 17. So in your calculator, you could do maybe log base 10 of the top number over log base 10 of the base. And then I can put that in my calculator, because my calculator has log base 10 button. And it gets me 2.579. This will be useful for graphing. So because the logarithms and exponentials are inverses of each other, their graphs are reflected over the line y equals x. So you can see the top graph here is 2 to the x. The blue one is log base 2 to the x. The exponential and the inverse. The logarithm. They're inverses. Th 
And remember, inverses mean the x and y are switched. We're at the point uh, 0, 1. It gives us the point 1, 0. So that 1, 2 gives us the point 2, 1, and so on. So if we have log uh, y equals log base b of x minus h, all the x and y stuff from the exponentials has switched. So the domain is the same as the range from the exponentials. The range of the exponential is y was greater than k. So the domain is x is greater than h. The range is all real numbers. That was the domain of the exponential. The exponential had a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. The logarithm has a vertical asymptote of x equals 0, or if we shifted, x equals h. And the x-intercept would be h plus 1 comma 0. Whereas for exponential, the y-intercept was 0 comma k plus 1. So to graph a logarithmic function, you need to find and graph the vertical asymptote. That's very important because your calculator might lie to you if you just look at your graphing calculator. Then you need to make a table of values and you probably want to use the change of base formula. So let's say you had log base b of x, you'd have log of x for log of the base. Or some of your calculators will have a log base function. On TI calculators, it'll be in your math menu called log base. On the NumWorks, it is in the toolbox. So let's graph this logarithmic function. So this is x minus negative 1, which is the x minus h, so h is negative 1. Our vertical asymptote was x equals h. So in this case, it'll be x equals negative 1. So I'm going to have a vertical asymptote here, x equals negative 1. Then I'm going to put this in my calculator and make a table of values. If you have the log base function on your TI calculator or your NumWorks calculator, you can use that. If you don't, we can use the change of base formula. Change of base formula says we can do log of the big part divided by log of the base. So I'm going to use log base 10 and put that in my calculator. You could use the natural log if you'd prefer. <clears throat> and it gives me the table. Uh, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4 are all errors. Negative 1 is a error. That's my asymptote. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 1 1.58. 3 is 2, 4 is 2.32, 5 is 2.58, and 6 is 2.81. So let's plot those points, 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so I've plotted those points. Now here's where your calculator might lie. If you look at your graph on your calculator, it might actually stop like that. But it doesn't really stop. It continues on all the way to the bottom. So you need to know that you draw the graph all the way to the bottom next to the asymptote. You need to be smarter than your calculator. Continue the graph all the way down to the bottom of the graph following the asymptote.